Hello and welcome to Infinity. Here's a few kind of extra things about curves that I haven't covered, I don't think, in all the many other curves videos that I've done. So let's let's get going. So let's create a curves and let's do Control M. Remember Control M because that's the first thing here. Here we go, Control M. There we go. And that will create a curves layer. So it's a very handy, very useful shortcut to remember. What else? If I'm moving the curve here, if I want to do some sort of fine adjustment of that, I can use the arrow keys. So I can see left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, just hold it down, it'll keep going. Or you can just click, click, click one at a time to do that. Um, Another thing is if you done produce something, sometimes you're, you're trying to get to, you know, to pick up that point and you just miss it a bit and all of a sudden it goes bink all over the place like that. Rather than try and find that one and then right click it, which you can do, um, to delete the current point, you just hit backspace. Yeah. You can just select a point, see it goes into a little a hollow circle, there, kind of black circle, yeah, backspace, and it is cancelled. There you go. That's another one. What else was there? Oh yes, here's another one. You know that the common thing to do is to produce an S-curve to get a, a sort of a um, a bit more contrast in it. Um, what we can do with this as a quick way of doing things is grab a point here and push that one all the way up to the top, top there, grab another one here, push that always down to the left. So just, it looks like this just just two points but clearly there's something else going on which is this and that will create that s curve there which goes normal there you are contrast and that's a quick kind of standard one it's very easy to do and it's very easy to replicate as well which means you can do it at the times uh, as well and do the same thing as you did last time okay what else is there uh reset this oh yes these things here input minimum input maximum well this is the input along here so if I say 0 0.5 and maximum say 0 0.8, then what I when I pull the curve here, it's only going to be taking account of it between the, the halfway 0 0.5 and 0 0.8, which is about here. So when I move this up and down, there's very little which is changed in the image. Look at this, I can go up and down and it's just that range of tonality. We could sort of go, well, I'm going to put three, oops, Daisy, three dots in a row here. See how faffy it is to anchor this and some dots up here to keep that and then pull this one up and down. And it's still not as good. So it's a lot easier often to just set the input and the output maximum, the input minimum, input maximum there. If you want to just affect an area, then use the picker. Go to that area if you want to just affect those trees and move that up and down. So look, it's in that zone there. So it's somewhere between 25 and 50%. So I go 0.25 and 0.5. And then if I move this up and down here, it's just going to affect that area down there because there's not much else which is affecting that. So you're getting a, even though you're moving quite a long way, you're getting a little bit of local change there. So what else do we have time for? One more. Let's do one more. Do a reset here. And if you want to do a black and white image, um, you can convert it to black and white first. But a quick way of doing it, you've got grey here. And if you hit grey, nothing seems to happen until you touch the curve. The moment you start something, the O has gone grey. Yeah. And then you can play around with this. You can again do that quick contrast curve which uh, gets it through the middle, so this is shadows down, highlights up. And also with a bias note, this has towards the top end and a, and a bias there towards the bottom end. Anyway, there we go. That's a few extra things, figure bonuses, little useful things to do in curves. Thank you very much for watching.